while Japan is filled with many folk tales and unconfirmed urban legends, real tragedy and horror was seen at this very spot. They say that Toyama Park after the sun sets is among the most terrifying places in the country, in an unsuspecting area of Shinjuku, Tokyo. Many passerbys have reported hearing the blood-curdling scream of a man within the park. These same reports have been a constant for decades. There was also the unearthing of hundreds of human bones beneath the park some years ago. What? What exactly happened here? The horrible events that took place here predate the park itself, having occurred in the 1940s. This was when a few undisclosed medical facilities were in place where the park now stands. The term medical facility, one specifically to treat those who sustained injuries from war, is the technical and official description. But what actually occurred within these walls is far more nefarious than the name allows you to think. You see, there have been many accounts of gruesome experimentation taking place here. Prisoners of war captured during the final years of World War II were speculated to have been exposed to deadly substances here against their will. Those substances likely being anthrax and bubonic plague. Doctors monitored and ultimately dissected these victims at this very spot where the park now stands. It's believed that the discovered remains are the victims and that Toyama Park was their resting place for decades. Those who live in the area near the park also claim to have seen Hitodamas, which are often described as floating flame-like objects. According to Japanese folklore, this object, the Hitodama, is a detached human soul. Funny thing is, there were accounts of Hitodamas being seen here before the bodies were discovered and the truth was known. Located in rural Hokkaido, Yubetsu was once a thriving mining town that offered a comfortable lifestyle to its inhabitants. This was due to the overabundance of coal mine from the aforementioned mines. Active from 1923 all the way up until 1970, Yubetsu saw as much prosperity as it did catastrophe. Over its 47 years of activity, there were at least 189 lives lost. These were from mining accidents, ranging from gas explosions to portions of the mine caving in and burying the workers alive. Even the citizens of the town itself faced tragedy directly with a serious parasitic outbreak one that also took numerous lives. After the mine was shut down for good, the town saw the loss of its primary source of income and thus lost many residents, making the former mining village of 15,000 residents a ghost town. A far cry from its glory days, if you can call them that. The Yubetsu mines have been abandoned for over 50 years now. While generally deemed off-limits, this spot is famous among ghost hunters and anyone with enough bravery to check the site itself out. The spot has become somewhat of a test of courage to many young people in the area. Some Hokkaido locals see visiting the mines as a coming-of-age practice. Many also visit the abandoned hospital that sits near the mines, one that obviously saw as much trauma as the mines itself. The spot is also famous and frequently visited, as it's easier and likely safer to access. Though, that doesn't make it less haunted. Those who do visit either area claim to experience dizziness and migraines that worsen until they leave the area. An urban legend surrounding the mines claims that visitors will receive a call on their mobile phone from an unknown number, and that caller will call constantly, over and over demanding the owner pick up. It doesn't matter if the cell phone is off or on silent, the call will still go through and it will still constantly ring, as long as you remain within the mines. According to this legend, under no circumstances should this call be answered. If one does answer the call, they will hear the sound of a woman screaming and thus will become cursed. Those who instead visit the abandoned hospital claim to hear this very same woman screaming, though not through a phone, but in person through the halls of the hospital itself.
To those familiar with the Sunshine 60 building in Ikebukuro, Tokyo, you may be a bit confused by this one being on the list. The Sunshine 60 building itself is a well-known landmark within Sunshine City, a very popular spot for tourists and locals alike. It has cute, fun things like an aquarium, a Pokemon cafe, and even a virtual amusement park. Though, don't be fooled, beneath all this shiny new infrastructure lies another spot with a very dark and tragic history. This very same site once housed the infamous Sugamo prison. Said prison was unique in that it was meant to specifically hold political prisoners. This was until 1945, when thousands of war-related criminals were housed at Sugamo as well. To those unaware, Japanese prisons are among the most strict and gruesome in the world. It's akin to a boot camp, as everything you do, from the way you talk to your sleeping and eating habits, are strictly enforced with severe punishment if not done correctly. Prisoners after the war were routinely starved and forced to perform manual labor as well. It was inevitable that some prisoners would perish during such imprisonment. Some specifically faced more extreme sentences, as routine executions would also take place at Tsugamo. These prisoners of war were housed from 1945 up until 1962, when the prison was closed for good. The building itself remained in place until its destruction in 1971. The empty lot remained until the Sunshine 60 building began construction and was ultimately completed and opened in 1978. The skyscraper was flocked to as it was the largest building in Japan from its opening up until 1991. It appeared that the gruesome past of the site was soon forgotten. That is, until some of its visitors began witnessing paranormal activity within the building. Some claim to have visually witnessed ghosts, more specifically humanoid figures in prison uniforms. The building itself frightens those who know its history, as it's sometimes described as having the shape of a gravestone. To this day, many flock to the stores of Sunshine 60, often on rainy days as it's well known as a fun place when the weather is poor. However, many also visit this building for ghost hunting, or during a tour of Tokyo's most notorious ghost spots. While tuberculosis is a long eradicated threat in much of the world, it's remained a serious health threat in Japan for many years. Tuberculosis awareness PSAs still air in modern Japan, as the majority of the population is older and has weaker immune systems. The very worst of this disease was seen in the 1930s and 1940s as a full-on epidemic had swept through Japan. The tragedy in its wake was unyielding. It's difficult to understand now, but tuberculosis was often a slow and painful death sentence to those diagnosed. It was because of the large number of tuberculosis cases that the Kaisaka Hospital was created in 1948. The structure sits within Osaka, the second largest city in Japan. Because of its location, the hospital was made to be one of the most advanced treatment centers in the country at that time. Even offering classrooms for children who suffered from the long-term effects of tuberculosis. Because this hospital was necessary to those with severe and complex cases, many deaths were unfortunately seen here. Because of that, it's said that many vengeful spirits dwell here. The spirits of those who got cheated out of a full and healthy life. The hospital had stayed open for over 40 years and had shifted more so to a center for disabled children by the early 90s. In 1992, when the hospital closed permanently, the staff curiously left everything within the building. This included furniture, documents, and even the medical equipment. Why they left everything on the property is completely unknown. In the decades following, the hospital has fallen to ruin. Many urban explorers have entered the hospital to explore it many of which felt an intense negative spiritual energy and noted that even the surgical equipment was still left out. This supposedly included used scalpels and robes that were not cleaned or put back. The horrific sights of the spot place it in infamy as a renowned haunted location. Many who enter the deteriorated structure note the faint voice of a man telling them to return home.
This spot was once meant to be a luxury beachside hotel meant to cater to the growth in tourism in Okinawa in the 1970s. The property was ambitious, meant to host a zoo, amusement park, and pool. While those invested in the project were optimistic, the locals were anything but. It's said that monks visited the site and begged the developers to immediately cease construction. It wasn't simply because the hotel could ruin the area's local traditions and culture. While also valid, there was a much bigger issue at hand. The land the hotel was being built upon was home to sacred religious sites as well as numerous graves. The pleas from the monks were ignored and the rapid construction continued. As it did continue, numerous construction-related accidents had occurred. Due to this, more and more of the workers had quit ultimately leaving the developers with little to no staff to continue. The lead developer, in an attempt to prove the site was not haunted, decided to stay one single night in what was completed. According to reports, co-workers found this man within the property the next morning. He was mumbling incoherently and not mentally present. The man appeared to have gone insane. After this, the developer allegedly went missing never to be seen from again. This hotel project was then abandoned and slowly became ruin, broken down further by the surrounding nature and vegetation. In the years following, the abandoned hotel had been named the most haunted spot in Okinawa. Okinawa itself is said to be home to many ghosts and spiritual activity, but the ruins of this hotel supposedly top them all. While many have visited the site, with a large number of people claiming to have seen or heard spirits within the halls, the entire hotel property was demolished in 2020. This school was built in 1906 in response to a surge in population around Bibai, an area of Hokkaido that once housed the Mitsubishi Bibai coal mine. Much like Yubetsu, the small mining community saw a boom in resources, but also a great deal of incidents and deaths. Numahigashi Elementary is unique, as it saw unexplained spiritual occurrences even before the mines were closed and people had left the town. The school also saw a lot of name changes as it was originally referred to as Banosawa Simple Education Center. There is little documentation from the early days of the schoolhouse, but it's been speculated that the frequent name changes were done to disassociate the school from the routine abductions of the students that had occurred there. Hokkaido in itself has seen a lot of missing children's cases in the early 1900s. But this school had seen an unusual number even for back then. One recovered record mentions a young girl who had disappeared during a very brief class break. The schoolhouse teacher had asked around town and nobody had seen the girl, not even her parents who lived very close by. Neither the girl herself nor any of her belongings were found or recovered in the area. The girl was never seen again. Many locals in the area saw the disappearance as the girl spiriting away. This term is prevalent in Japanese folklore. It refers to those who had vanished without any trace. And it is said that gods or spirits remove select people who are outcasts or had upset a deity. They are said to be transported to an unknown place, often thought to be the spirit world or afterlife. The ruins that remain of Numahigashi schoolhouse are seen as dangerous with an overabundance of negative spiritual energy. Locals do everything in their power to avoid going near the schoolhouse and the surrounding forest. Claiming to hear the unsettling giggles of a child and even the glowing silhouette of one with a red backpack at night, 